your demanding work lifestyle and need a fire resistant clothing that can keep up well l4fr clothing should be your go-to for quality affordability safety and style l4fr was founded by a third generation oil field worker who is also a veteran thus this company has a deep appreciation for reliability and longevity all while we provide first-rate customer service. Our durable apparel will serve you well for many years to come, whether you're working on a pipeline, a lineman climbing utility poles, or in any other environment requiring fire-resistant apparel. L4FR has you covered. Our apparel is tough enough to resist hazardous conditions while still providing high comfort and style. L4FR provides clothing options to ensure your safety and comfort, whether you're on the job or not. To view our complete inventory of flame-resistant garments, please visit our online store at L4FRclothing.com or give us a call at 817-757-4935. See habla espanol. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first weekly wrap up show of the season, week one. It's your boy Brett Swinney here. Alongside of me is Mr. Red Zone himself, KO Kylo. What's going on, Kyle? What's up, man? How are you? It's good. It's good. It's good to be able to talk about some actual games now tonight. I know we've been kind of predicting and telling you guys what we thought was going to happen, but it's a little bit different when we actually get to talk about real games. It's better. It's a whole lot better. We're not we're not saying, well, if this happens, if this happens, you know, we we've seen these teams now and, and it's only one game. So it's it's hard to judge a team off one game, but at least we have something recent to talk about instead of last season. All right. So, again, anybody join us tonight, uh, feel free to live chat with us during our show. We've got Jake here with us returning from last year. What's going on, Jake? What's up, Jake? You know, Eddie's going to be in here tonight. Eddie's fired up this week. I'm sure he is. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he's got his opinions and. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us again. And, and if it's our first time to join us, we're here every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. throughout the whole season and postseason. And uh, we wrap up last week's games. Um, we had a little pick em, uh competition, Kyle, last week. We won, set a new netizen record with 111 participants in last week's pick em contest. Absolutely outstanding. I mean, it crushed awesome. the old record. Um, I believe it was like 25 or something in one week last year, maybe. But, uh, yeah, so thank you, everyone, that participated um we had two winners this week that no one was perfect we had two with nine um 
the winners for this week was not me or you, Kyle. Uh, I know. I, know. I had a rough week. Hey, but I'll tell you this. The two guys that finished below us that are on this show aren't here. So, <laughs> well, and they also didn't do something else that they were supposed to do this week either. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get on that topic here in a little bit. But um, our winners for this week were Justin Brown and Randall McMinn. So congratulations to Justin and Randall. Um, I've, I've already emailed you guys to, to send you an address, and I'll be sending you a, a uh, prize for winning this week's. Uh, you can only win once during the regular season. But there's this thing at the end of the season, Kyle, and we have, <laughs> we have something for that this year. Kyle, don't laugh. Okay. All right. So here we go. We have a pick <laughs> championship belt so the winner of the overall pick em this year will take home the championship belt now maybe next year if we get a sponsor for this show we'll make it a little bit bigger but this is a death size championship belt but it's something that the only the winner will have so it's anybody it's open for anyone not just us so whoever takes home the overall championship will uh We'll take that. Let's see. Eddie knows uh, one of the winners. So he's a Mount Pleasant guy. So mm, okay. Eddie knows him. Uh, let's see. His son is the quarterback for Mount Pleasant. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, okay. okay. Thanks for that good information, Eddie. But, yeah, so out of 111 people, Kyle, no one picked 10 out of 10. That just tells you how week one was kind of uh, crazy there. There were some upsets. Uh, there were some upsets, I think, and – when we go over the games, for sure, I know we'll talk about them. But there was there was some upsets this week, and it's so, it's so hard to predict week one. I mean, I think that's the toughest week to do because you're going off everything from last year or scrimmages or practices you may have seen, no live action stuff really, mm-hmm. and or, like, um, or teams like their their uh, past like to past performance. Like you know, we expect these teams that are you know district champions every year and go three or four round we expect them to win you know they don't that doesn't always happen so it's really really hard um the heat was a factor as yes you know, we know where we with the game we were it was very hot so what do you mean we know you i, I know well <laughs> that the the, pre, the press box to my defense the press box windows were open so okay. we didn't have a whole lot of ac it's probably one of the warmer uh press boxes that i've been in so and it was because we shut the door and it that heat was still coming in from the yeah. window so I mean, well, it was it was rough can, it for for me. I can tell you down on the field. I felt I felt for those kids. I mean, I, I really did. Like, I was hot. I was drenched in sweat. You could tell in the post game interview. Like, I'm I'm glistening because I'm just yeah. I believe yeah. 100. I want to say it was it was around 105, 106 for kickoff of our game. Um, but yeah, it was it was extremely hot down on the field, especially before the sun went down with that sun beating down on the turf and it bouncing back up. It was so hot. I felt bad for those kids. But to both teams' credits, I didn't see many people cramping on on Friday night, which you would have expected to see, especially the first game. And as hot as it was, there was a couple of cramps, but it wasn't like I thought it would be. So kudos to them for the the conditioning that they got themselves into to deal with that heat. Yeah, the coaches did a good job of prepping them. So, All right, so let's get going through these uh, these games here, Kyle. We're going to start um, – from the the first game on the Pick'em Challenge. Let me get over here to my uh, cheat sheet. <laughs> Look, yeah. Jake, Jake said he watched the second half of the Lindo game and the AC at home. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, <laughs> that's you know, not a bad idea. <laughs> times that just think smarter there, Jake. <laughs> um, first game uh, was on Thursday night, North Forney and White House. And Kyle, I, I missed this one, and so did a lot of people. Um, had White House winning this one. But North Forney put it to him. Had a White House had a couple of guys out, uh, may have affected it a little bit. But man, North Forney was was strong. Yeah, I, I I didn't see this. I'd picked White House as well. I didn't see this upset happening. Um, but I I was unaware until we discussed on Sunday that White House had a couple of guys out. Um, so that's definitely that's definitely a difference in in it, it makes a difference in the game. So I think white house will be able to bounce back this week, but a, a tough loss to open the season, but good thing it was non-district. And Kyle, I think this message is for you here. Uh, Chris is back <laughs> here all of a sudden. Welcome See, back. Chris. Here's let, let me, let me explain something. Let me, let me explain something real quick. Last year when I, when I was uh, last year, when I was, you know, on, on the harmony train, <laughs> the uh, the hooks people were all all on me, 
until the playoffs when Harmony and Hooks played. Then Harmony won. Then Hooks got quiet. So was, now they disappeared. They disappeared. But I was still on the show. And now, <laughs> yes, last week I picked Harmony to beat Hooks. Hooks won. Great. Listen, no, no, I'm not joking when I say this. This is all serious. Hooks is a very good football team. And they, that I wasn't at the game, obviously, but from what I see and from what I've heard, it was a really good football game. Um, Hooks actually took the lead late in that ball game. So uh, kudos to them. Big win for the Hornets to open the season. Um, but here's the thing I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be here for the shows. I'm not going anywhere just because I was wrong. So what I, <laughs> what I ask of you, Hooks people, is if Hooks loses a game down the road, don't don't go away. Stay. Stay for a while. It's okay. We're yeah, good. Well, we have fun every Wednesday night. Yeah. We have fun here. I've got a couple more chats here. Uh, I'm not sure what this is referring to. It says, you can't hold a real one down for long. I don't know if he's talking <laughs> about, is this maybe Harmony? I'm not sure. I don't uh, know. Let's see. We got Chris again. Harmony is a very good team. So he gave Harmony I'm, credit. I'm sure they'll meet down the road again. I have no doubt. It's a good, there's a good, very good chance of that. Um, I'm rusty from the off season. Oh, so, maybe that's that's what you were saying. Okay. And um Hook says the toughest non district schedule in three A according to oh, this is uh this is Derek. Uh oh uh, what's welcome, up, Derek? welcome Derek. Glad to have you I, back. Eddie, I'm the only reason I would um disagree with that. Well, I'm I don't know Hook's schedule as good as you do, but I will say just off the top of my head, in our area, Gladewater has a murderer's row of non-district opponents. I mean, with with uh, Mount Vernon, Dangerfield, all those schools, like they got, they have a tough, tough non-district schedule. So, um, I mean, I'm I'm sure I don't know if I'd say oh, three ranked teams back to back to back. Listen, rankings don't mean nothing, Eddie. All right, <laughs> <laughs> rankings mean nothing. <laughs> Oh man! So it's good to have uh, our our favorite duo of, of Derek and Eddie back in the house, and also uh, Chris. So keep the chats coming, guys. Um, we're going to move down to the next one. Um, I don't say that this is a surprise, but the way this turned out was a surprise. Another Thursday night matchup between two state ranked teams in Timpson and Beckville, Kyle, and no bussy. It was Gardner and them boys. <laughs> I mean, put JJ Gardner in, and boom. Uh, yeah. A huge win for Timpson. I mean, I know. I mean, I was expecting Timpson to win. I picked them, um, maybe by not that much, and they didn't have Derry Bussy, and they won fifty to thirteen. Kyle, as we bring in, as we bring in, see him, Corey Marshall to the fold. Welcome, Corey. Oh, he's, he's yeah. We're ready for him. <laughs> what's up, Corey? Oh, oh, what's going on? Yeah, we're we're here, Corey. We got we got lots of the familiar faces here with us tonight, Corey. We've got we've got uh, we've got, Eric, we've got uh, Eddie. Let's see. see if he can hear. So okay. we got so so Kyle. What did you think about the Timson game? I mean, I, I'm sure you've kind of felt the same way about you know without Bussy, we're like, well, maybe they Beckfield has a chance. Um, I, I, I think it speaks more to the team. Now we, we put a lot on Terry Bussey and Vosky Howard, but I think you can, this, that win last week spoke a lot about the team effort that Timson can put together and how good of a team they actually have. And Beckville had a tough opening week and it doesn't get much easier this week for them. So um, a, a couple of, a couple of tough games back to back for Beckville and, and Timson also has a, a, a tough game coming up next week. Um, not this week, but the the following week with a, a danger field match up there. So, um, but I, I'm proud of Timson. I, I wasn't expecting that score though. I did pick them, but um, I wasn't expecting that score. So, I'm excited to see Bussy come back though. But for them to win without Bussy is one thing. And when Bussy comes back healthy, and that's what we hope. Take your time, Bussy. Don't don't come back too soon. You, yeah. They don't need you till district. <laughs> These so, non district so get- games don't matter. Got a couple of chats on this. We got what happened to Bussy. He was injured uh, later in the season. And here's here's a uh, yeah, Derek to confirm he's got hurt during track season. Yeah, he had a he had knee surgery. Yeah, he, they're just holding him out. Okay, he's just like yeah. they're trying to be extra precautious. I'm sure all the colleges, you know, are one that too. Um, and he said he'll be back for district, so that's when it matters. Obviously, they don't say they don't need him, but. Um, they look pretty. They put pretty solid without him. I mean, that's just going to make them that much better 
going forward, if they can plug in a guy like Gardner and he does that, I think it was like five or six touchdowns he had on the ground. That speaks to their depth, though, and that's that's good. That's a that's a big deal, especially in two A. Yeah. Well, here we go. Let's uh. Hey, the Beckville DC is from uh, Hooks as well, so there let's, you go. We got Hooks connections all over the place here. Let's see if uh, see if Corey Corey, you got your sound fixed here. Are we ready to see if we can get him back in here, Corey. Uh, Corey, you got your sound working? He looks like he's still working on it. We'll we'll let him we'll let him fix it up. Um, all right, so the next one, actually. Um, for the next game, hold on. I got to do something real quick. I'll be right back. What the world? What, what is going on here? All right. Now I'm ready to talk about the next game. As my one of our teams, the Brook Hill guard, uh, didn't come up with the win, but they sure do look nice in the Netizen colors, Kyle. Oh, okay. Our, our new yeah. Netizen Brook Hill edition hat that's uh that's now cool. available. Yeah. So um tough one from Brook Hill. I wish we had uh Jeremy on tonight. He was unavailable to come on and talk about it. But um from what I gathered, they just got off to a rough start. Um trailed early, had a chance to tie at twenty eight twenty one at one point in the game and they fumbled and uh kind of railroaded on him as we got Corey Corey back here with us. Corey, you get you got us you got all ready to go. You can you guys hear me? It's a bad echo still. No, you're good. I think I think the echo's gone. Okay. I was just I was just showing everyone okay. our new Brook Hill edition Net SN hat as I'm talking about the Brook Hill game. So uh I can't really see the color too well, when I, I got you. It's the yeah, it's the navy and it's the navy and orange and the white. So um but yeah, we we're talking about how Brook Hill um, I had them in my, my pick. I don't know about you guys, but I had them and and um they just got behind early, caught to Coach Hubbard, and they just couldn't come back and and had a tough one in Grapevine. Um hopefully they can bounce back this week. Um Corey, you got anything? We we talked about the White House and Timpson games. Do you have anything to add that you want to talk about specifically for those? No. You good? Okay. We talked about I'm, the whole I'm how how Clemson was impressive uh, without Bussy and White House just surprised us. They came out um, on the losing end of that one. So, um, Corey, you did miss us talking about earlier. And while you're here now, uh, Kyle, uh, who had the least picks correct um, of the four of us here in the in the in our Minnesota? I don't think it was. It wasn't that Kyle or or Brett people. I think it was some no. other guys. It wasn't me, and it wasn't you. I don't know who it was, but it wasn't us two. So that, that leaves a couple other people. Yeah, I think it was a as a two way tie for last. I don't know. And, Corey, and what yeah. happened, man? What happened with your picks? <laughs> oh, um, I just didn't pick them right. It happens. <laughs> it happens. Uh, it happens. We had to give you our time. We know we know Vince didn't want to show up because he told me earlier. He's like, man, if I tie with that Corey guy, then I must be in, in bad shape. That's what he told me. I mean, I'm not going for the wins. I'm going for the for the entertainment value. <laughs> oh man! Gotta All make right, everybody. Gotta make everybody happy. All right, so um, Kyle, you had Brook Hill. Um, I mean, I saw some of the stats, and they gave the ball to Braxton Durrett 40 times on the ground. He had a great game in running the football. Um, he actually coming off an ankle injury. Corey knows him from the basketball court. Uh, Mr. Durrett is one of those that plays like is his life dependent on it. And he does the same thing on the football field. He's a, he's a very physical back and important part of their team. And it's good to see him get a lot of carries making, making sure that he's, you know, good and healthy as they uh, start their district play here in a few weeks. And actually we'll have that Brook Hill game this week on SN. We'll talk about it a little bit more later. Um, now game four, this was probably, in my opinion, my it was my upset pick, and and um, I'll let you guys talk about it. Did did either one of you, I know Corey had uh, our Kyle? You had Joaquin, I believe, huh? Yes, absolutely, I did. What, did, what I, was, I was what going did you off think about the game. I well, I was just going off all we could with last year, and where Arp had a good season last year, but but it was it was Joaquin that that really 
really kind of showed us last year that they were a, a dominant team, and I, I expected them to kind of come out and repeat that from last year, and they just didn't, man. Art, shout out to Art, man. They came out and and took it to a really good Joaquin team. <laughs> ARP, the new <laughs> ARP edition. They're one, also one of our teams that we cover. So, you you know, check out the new ARP edition that is in hat. Okay, there you go. Uh, but, yeah, super happy for ARP, and um, I was really surprised by it, but but happy for them. So I'm um, excited to see what they could do this week. They got a, they got another tough one this week, too. So we'll have to see how they can then come out and perform this week. I would say they have a, a pretty tough schedule as well. I mean, yeah. they come Joaquin, Garrison, and then they play Carlisle in week three we talked about. Yeah, so that's, ARP's going to know that's how, not easy. How, how well they've improved. Corey, um, you had ARP. Pete. What did you think about the Art Tigers? I did. Before? I picked them for the upset. I picked them for the upset. And I'm, I'm going to pick them again this week because I think they're a lot better. Uh, two years under Coach Mickey. I mean, he's, he's going to teach them how to fight a little bit. And that's exactly what happens. But like Jeremy said, if you guys missed the uh, the uh, Beasley, Beasley, Texas report, I think I'm saying it right. Um, you, you talked to – he mentioned the fact that you guys, you know, teams have all year – all summer to prepare for one team. And, you know, Joaquin is a, is a scheme team. You know, they run the triple option and or the wishbone, if you want to call it that. And um, and that's that's rough, you know, and they had all summer to prepare for that one team. And, and man, look, you know, after getting blasted last year, they came out and, and did a little thrashing themselves. So that's a good win, good mental psyche for that team. And um, if they can continue on this week, and that's a little more balanced. Now, week two is going to be that – that test, you know, you are you are who you were week one, or you, or you are for the following week. So that that's that's what they have to do. But I, I think they'll I think they'll take it. You beat Joaquin, they're a pretty good team. You can take them on, and you know, Garrison. I'm not saying they're going to be a knockover, but it's going to be a contest. Yeah, I think so. Speaking of a knockdown dragout, and I'm sure Eddie can give us some good insight in this game, uh, Brock. Pleasant Grove slugged it out for a 10-7 win for Pleasant Grove. Um, man, that was kind of the opposite of the game I was at. I mean, it was like points, <laughs> points, points all over the place, and these guys were just killing each other for yards. Um, two touchdowns total, the uh, field goals, the difference. Um, honestly, not what I expected. I mean, I picked Pleasant Grove to win, but Brock Brock showed me something. And Eddie, Eddie's even impressed. He says Brock will not lose another game this year. His prediction. That's um, a that's a tough opening game for yeah. for both teams. Lots of lots of travel and and two tough opponents. I mean, that's that's it was. It sounds like it was a really great game. And and for Pleasant Grove to to hold Brock to seven, that's huge. That's huge, man. And and for their defense, that speaks volumes about the defense. Um, obviously Brock's going to make it hard to get some points on the board and for Pleasant Grove to go out there and scratch and claw their way to a victory and find a way to win that game. That's huge. That's uh, congratulations, Pleasant Grove. That's awesome. Yeah. Having a defense, we talk about how important that is. Defense uh, wins championships. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I thought, you know, I didn't, I mean, Brock's, you know, they're carrying a the name for themselves. Um, of course, Pleasant Grove is, is thinking championship or bust uh, this year. They're, they're pretty they're pretty loaded as well. And I think they're probably going to be favorites in that district um, this year. But um, I I don't even know. I, I, I'm curious to see how many – I think Brock's 3A Division One and and our Pleasant Grove's 4A Division Two. I wonder what the difference in, in, in enrollment is. Probably not much, Corey, because you know, I believe – I believe yeah, what it I'm can't be that much. Brock is going to be moving up a classification next year is what I've kind yeah. of believed. So it can't be that much. So I was kind of thinking like, okay, Brock's maybe a smaller school, you know, compared to, you know, if it's, you know, I am, if it's, if it's 100 and some odd kids, it's not a, that's not a major difference to me. It's not a major difference, but I, you know, I guess that's a, that's a big win. I mean, that's a big win for PG. And um, you know, Brock's they've they've been, you know, they've been tough, you know, year in and year out, you know, for the past few years. So that's that's a good win for them. Yeah, Eddie says they'll be for a division two. Um yeah, Chris right thinks Brock's gonna move up. I think it's pretty good it's consensus. Um Eddie's saying they had as many players as they did, so there wasn't much difference as far as uh numbers go. So 
that's just a good that's a good uh, first week game. We had several of those, but that's a really hard fought kind of see where you are type game. Um, again, both I like to see more there. neutral neutral side games. I like to see more more neutral side games being played. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, it was a good one there for week one. Um, all right, so the next one we had uh, Jacksonville Sulphur Springs. Um, this was a back and forth battle. Jacksonville actually had the lead um, in the second half. Um, believe a couple of guys got injured, um, some key pieces, and Sulphur Springs was able to come back and take that one. I had Sulphur Springs there, and I just I'm not. It was one of those Jacksonville. I'm not sure of. I know they're they're improving their coach Holman. I just don't know where they're at. I know they're going to be battling for that fourth spot probably um, in the district with maybe uh, Palestine and Henderson and, and those guys. Um, but I was impressed that they were able to stay with Sulphur Springs as as well as they did. Um, I guess we'll see. They have a big big get matchup against White House next week, so we'll see what they're made of there because we all expect the White House to be a little bit better in week one. They weren't, but you know, there's a couple of question marks for both of those teams coming up. Um, but uh, that'll be interesting to me. Um, what do you guys think of this matchup? I I saw Sulphur in a scrimmage with Lindell, and I was impressed with their offense. I, they have they have some studs out on the outside at receiver. Quarterback's not bad. He's a really good thrower of the football. Um, so yeah, and, and Sulphur did not have a good year last year. Coach Faircloth, it was his first year at Sulphur Springs. Um, I think another year, a full year now with his system being able to implement what he wants and kind of get that culture kind of turned back. Sulphur Springs has a good football culture. They won a state championship not too long ago. Uh, I mean, you know, relative, you know, 12, 13 years ago, but still um, they've won a state championship recently. Do you and know on that staff, Kyle? It, it was don't Coach Coker. What? Don't. No. Yeah. Don't Coach Coker it. was on that staff too, wasn't he? I believe so, yeah. But you don't want me to mention it, Corey. I was just going to say Coach Reardon of Chapel Hill was, was a – No, was a, I don't want you to bring up Chapel Hill on the show. I'm, I'm counting every time you bring up Chapel Hill on the show. It, it, it had, it had something to do with it because he mentioned the state title. I just was – Coach Owens, <laughs> Coach Owens, the, the head coach was – for Sulphur Springs, was the head coach at Lindale previously before he went to Sulphur Springs and won the state championship. Oh, don't so. mention Lindale, Kyle. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but yes, anyway, I think yes. I, I think Sulphur Springs. I, I, I picked them to win it. I think they. I think they'll have a better year this year. They're going to be fighting for a playoff spot. They're in a, a tough district, but um, I think they're they're going to have a, a pretty good year. It'll be a tough test this week against. Uh, uh, it'll be a tough test this week. Who are they? Jackson. No, they played them last week. White House this week. No, that's Jacksonville. Jacksonville I can get all my schools White mixed House. up. Yeah, Jacksonville plays the White House. Eddie says that White House is a forty-five, 45 point favorite. Woo. Man. Let's see. We got <laughs> Corey is sick of getting called a homer. <laughs> I mean, this is a neutral show. This is a neutral show. We just we just giving, we just doing, you know. Hey, I just I, gave am, a, I, I never yeah. first I of all, I'm back. never ever gonna get tired of being called a homer. I rock my school. Anybody who graduated from the school should always represent this school. But that's all I'm saying. Mount Pleasant. Took- Sulphur Springs plays Mount Pleasant. Oh, Sorry. Okay. Go there ahead. you go. SS I had to, I had to put the pin on it. <laughs> Here you go. Here's one for Eddie for you, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> I was called a homer too, Corey. That's okay. Oh, uh, it's okay. fine. Eddie's a homer. I know he's. A, I know he's a homer. <laughs> Eddie. Eddie. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He definitely is a homer. He's a. He's a. Uh, everybody. Texas. Texarkana area team homer. Okay, so. And he, um, well, one quick stat, uh, McCowan for Jacksonville was 15 of 31 for 209 yards and two touchdowns. So a good, good, uh, outing for McCowan. So, um, you know, with the McCowan at quarterback, I, that's a, it's a pretty good pedigree there. You can't, you can't, uh, shake that. So I, I expect Jacksonville to be very competitive throughout the season. Uh, we'll just see kind of how the district shakes up. All right. Next up is, uh, it's a game number seven. And this one is interesting. We'll have lots of uh, comments, I'm sure, from Chris on this one. As Hooks knocks off Harmony in Week One, kind of the same thing that happened last year, uh, Kyle. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you because you're very familiar with this matchup. Yeah, the uh, it, it last year was a three point game. This year was a four point game. Uh, I mean, these two teams are very evenly matched. I, I think these are 
are two of the better teams in that 3A Division II ranks. Um, I think, personally, either one of these teams could make a run. Like, Harmony made the run last year. That, that could have very easily been Hooks last year. It could be Hooks this year. Um, I think they're two very good teams. It, Harmony took the lead kind of later in that game. Then Hooks scored, I want to say, with about a minute left in the game and, and was able to hold on to win that game. So a, a close contest, two evenly matched teams. I think they'll see each other later down the road. Uh, they did last year. I, I wouldn't expect to see anything different this year. Um, and it, it'll be interesting to see. That'll be one heck of a game when they meet in the playoffs with with more on the line uh, than starting the season. But a great opener for both schools to go out there and play another really competitive team and be really competitive in the game. So uh, shout out to both teams, though. All right. We got your my boy Conrad's here. Uh, Cal says uh, Coach Jenkins said before the game is going to go down to who had the ball last. Look what happened. Well, there so. you go. <laughs> coaches, know, coaches know they they're pretty they smart so, um we got uh chris says we should meet in the second or fourth round again see last year was the second round i hope it I, I i don't want it to be the second round i want it to be the fourth i want it to be deeper in the playoffs where it's more impactful of a game because i think that's the higher stakes will just make the game better well and you you probably it's probably going to come down to again the danger field harmony Depends on you know how harmony falls in the district, you know that yeah. determine it because I think Hooks is probably going to win their district. Uh, oh yeah, see them having yeah. anybody else in the in the way on that one. Uh, Corey, you got any thoughts on this one? Harmony let me down. Oh man, I was I was I was all the way there, and I'm like, <laughs> this is this is Harmony's year. And I'm not boss to see one. I'm a boy, man. It happens. It happens. So um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spill, you know cry over spilled milk. Ooh. It's it's week one, as I always say, week one, W E A K, week one. Um, and hey, they got nine more games guaranteed to play. So yeah. listen, right. let's let's not forget they started 0 and 4 last year and then made it to the state semifinals. Mm-hmm. So it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Uh, I would if you're a Harmony Eagle fan like I am, I would not be worried. I'm not I'm not throwing up the the warning signs, the warning flags. It's okay. It's all right. So we got uh, our quarterback got hurt, and then a sophomore quarterback led the game-winning drive. That's that's, that's a good. that's a good sign for Hooks. I mean, you get some put a sophomore in there, and he's able to do that. That's that's impressive. Um, Eddie, I'm going to ignore your comment. You you can you guys have to tune into the Beast from the East to get any Beast from the East information. Uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Um, let's see. Conrad Harmony is fired to play White Oak this week. White Oak knocked off Harmony. Knocked Harmony out of the playoffs in baseball. Ooh. Could be yeah. some kind of uh, blood, uh, you know, some. White Oak's not very good. It's always though. good to have a, a cross sport rivalry. Yeah. You know, it's always good to have that, you know. But they're more evenly matched in baseball, though. <laughs> <laughs> so they're well, going to take out their frustrations yeah, yeah. on White yeah. Oak this week. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know any good baseball rivalry. It's good. I like that. Next up, uh, game eight, a game that was broadcast on NetSN by our, our friends down in center, the center Rough Riders and the Tatum Eagles, oh. where it was a basketball game going on down there in center. Uh, 80 to 61, guys. Uh, NetSN uh, scoring record. Um, geez, there was no defense played. Uh, center had a jillion yards. Tatum had half a jillion yards. And, uh, it was just a shootout. Um, I had center there. I, I wasn't surprised by the, the center victory. I was surprised, not that they scored a lot of points, but how many they scored on both sides. I mean, that's just redonkulous. Yeah, that's – it worries me a little bit. Like, I, the offense is good. That's great. But, like I said earlier, defense wins championships. If you can't stop somebody, you're not going to be able to outscore every team. It's just not going to happen. You're going to have an off night offensively where the defense is going to need to step up and get a stop. And so uh, it's excellent that center scored 80. Not good they gave up over 60. So definitely need to work on the defense, but uh, exciting time for center. I picked center as well. I, I figured they would win, but I didn't think it would be a basketball game. Oh, yeah. No, I, I didn't think they'd be hooping on a Friday in, 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 in this, this type of heat. But I will say this, though. It's it's kind of weird that you had a lot of, a lot of high-scoring games early. Um, you know, offense was clicking, and because of that, 
you know, you've been preparing game plan all this whole time. You already know the opponent. You know, you've been preparing game plan, and everybody's kind of geared up, got all the plays going. It's it's it was it was bound to happen. Not eighty points. I don't know about eighty points. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a, <laughs> so, I know, so but it's but so, games like that are very exciting. I'm gonna give you some stats for this one, Corey. Um, we got the uh, let's see, the t- the Tatum quarterback. Watson had it was 13 of 18 for 280 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, cross from center QB was nine of 14, 224 yards and four touchdowns. You had Dixon with 21 carries for 282 yards and a touchdown. You had cross on the ground for center, the quarterback, nine carries, 217 yards and a touchdown. Um, Watson from Tatum, the QB was on the ground was 14 carries for 151 yards. I mean, you had just guys putting up gaudy numbers all over the field. Um, and you expect that with that kind of scoring output. Um, Vince, we're talking basketball game, Tatum versus center. Uh, any thoughts on that? Well, they were hooping, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, it was it was it's crazy, you know. The worst part of that is knowing that Tatum scored over sixty points and still lost. You know, like what do you tell your kids <laughs> when you when you drop sixty on somebody, you still lose? What's up, Eddie? Stop somebody. That's what you tell them. <laughs> yeah, you can try. Yeah, so. That's that's rough. Well, that's, yeah, rough. that's crazy. I don't know. And and uh, another thing that's to to uh, take into effect, if you guys don't know, we have a a center's coaches show, uh, the Rick Meek show here on NetSN. Um, it was live last night, um, but we still have it on the YouTube channel. So if you want to hear from Coach Meeks and his thoughts on the basketball game that his team participated in this week, uh, you can check that out um, on our on our YouTube channel. So, um, Vince, is there any games that we've already talked about that you that you want to throw any two cents in? We've we've we're on we're on this one. We've got. Um, I'll just kind of we talk White House, Foreign North Forney. We talk Timson, Beckville, Brook Hill, Grapevine, Faith, Art, Joaquin, Pleasant Grove, Brock, Jacksonville, Sulphur Springs, and Hooks Harmony. We want we want your thoughts on just pick some games there that you have some thoughts on and, and what you think. Um you said White House. White House was kind of a little bit of a shocker. Um <clears throat> but you know, you 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 hear that two of the players uh I, I I guess they got suspended. Uh, to two of the good players right before the game, or the day before, or the day of. I don't know. I can't remember. But um, that definitely hurts your your program. Um, and man, it's kind of selfish, you know. When you think about it, it's like man, especially like when you when you you know you're a leader on that team, you know. So I imagine that uh, they have some recovering to do. Um, so I, I won't hold it against White House. It just, it, it's just, it's just crappy when, you know, you you don't get the best out of an opponent like that. And, um, uh, who else do you say? You say Arp, Arp yeah, played, did. um, Joaquin. Joaquin. Yes. That was, that was a shocker to me. Some people believe in Arp. I mean, I don't mean to say it like that. I'm sorry. Wow. I, I don't Smink mean to be Smink like, Smink I don't Smink believe Smink in Arp. Me. Just no, no, no. Because Sminky, hey, hey, coach, I, I don't I don't mean it like that at all. I, I just, Joaquin is a good team. He knows that. And and he, he got a good win. He really did. He got a good win. Congratulations, with, coach. People believe him. Uh, Smink dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Smink dog. dog got him a win against Joaquin. That's dope. Uh, that's a good win, really a good win, and honestly, that's what football is about, right? I mean, that's the reason you line up. I mean, the paper will tell you one story, but you know, the player will tell you something different. Friday night will tell you something different, so uh, you always got to show up. Yeah, tell always. us what I know. The one that we've talked about kind of a little bit is uh, the Timson Beckville, Timson not having Bussy and still winning 50 to 13. What do you think about that? Uh, it just goes to show you that there's more to Timson than Bussy. Uh, I think Bussy is the um, he's the prominent figure on that team. He's the standout. Uh, clearly, like we've we've been talking about D one material, uh, but clearly there are some other dogs on that team. So uh, it's just crazy to think that how good they are without him. That's scary. 
you know. Yeah. Um, and what do you? What do you Neil. Nim. Nim. Nim showed up. Bussy Nim. Oh, the boy, that's the Nim. The Nim. That's the Nim yeah, part. Bussy yeah. Was the okay. Table. Nim showed up. I got you. <laughs> it, it was Bussy yeah. wasn't there, but Nim was, was there. Gardner Nim was there. Yeah, Nim showed up. It was Gardner. It was Gardner and Nim. The rest of them showed up. It was Gardner. Yeah. Yeah. Gardner so, and Nim. For it. Gardner and Nim showed up. I'm, I mean, it's that's yeah, great. The other, that's, other boys that's great that they, you know, when you, <clears throat> especially when you're back to Nim, being able to. I love being able to get a win like that, even without your best player, it just goes to show you how well coached they are, how disciplined they are. So, um, Timpson finna run the table. I, I, I hate to say that early, but they finna run the table. If if that's what who they are without them, you know, like you could think of, of a lot of teams, right? And you could say, well, who's the best player on that team? Who's their their guy that gets them all these wins, right? And then you say, let's take them off their team. Do we still think that that's a good team? You know, in right. in many cases, your answer might not be the same. You know, uh, there's a few schools, you know, that got a lot of talent in, like Carthage, Chapel Hill. Um, um, Gilmer, Gilmer's talent. I must, huh? Gilmer. Gilmer's talent. Gilmer. You can take their best Very player. Talented. You can take their best player, and they're still a really talented school. Um, but some teams, like we just talked about with White House, you take off those two best players. And and you, they struggle, you know. So, um, Timpson, T- I hate. I don't like to say that because it's it's week one. But man, they they scary. They're, it's they're really not scary, so man. fast, my friend. They need to not move. so fast, my friend. Oh my god, you gonna listen. turn on me already? No, no, hey, no. just remember no. who who Still donned you, Mister Red Zone? Because I listen. I told you you need to change your name <laughs> to Mister Red Zone. So don't don't this, get on me too uh, much. This I'm not gonna get on you, man. I'm just gonna bring something to to everyone's attention. That's all I'm gonna saying. do. Wait, listen to the table. T- he gonna hit me with a table. He gonna hit nah. me with a chair. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't the wrestling podcast, Vince. I'm not. I'm not coming off the top rope, right? <laughs> listen, all right. All, all, right. all, all I was gonna got? say is, Timpson's gonna have a, a tough one next week when they got to play Dangerfield. That Dangerfield Timpson game is gonna be a heck. And if Bussy's not there, which they're saying he's held out till district, but don't so you feel case, like? Do you feel? Don't you don't you don't feel like Beckville was is better than than Dangerfield? You think Dangerfield's better than than Beckville? I I, I, I mean I don't know. know. I I kind of feel I think, like they're the same. If so, if Dangerfield and Beckville played, I think I would take Dangerfield. I would pick Dangerfield. I think. Is it is it more because you just saw them play Timpson and saw what you what you didn't think you no, were seeing? No, I I just think Dangerfield. I think I think you can't teach speed, and I think speed kills, and I think Dangerfield. Okay. Has okay. more speed than Beckville, where they can get outside on the okay. edges and out and out run and basically race race Beckville off the field. That's that's basically what I'm, I'm thinking. I'm gonna I say this Beckville. now. This is last year, and I don't like to do this, but I will say this. You know, last year we did this to Beckville. They got beat up by Timpson, and then they <laughs> turned around and they just wiped the rest of the season. <laughs> they wiped the floor with everybody. So you know, we and we dogged them after week one. We dogged them. So. I'm not trying to dog. I think they'll still be a very good I team. I didn't. I didn't dog. Better than Beckville. Corey, yeah, you did. Factor. Yeah, you did. <laughs> no, there was All one right, person. Eddie, Eddie says they first. better too. Eddie says they better too. Okay, I don't know. I, I, I kind of look at them as equals. So, That's but I mean, if say, they better, they better. Timson, Timson might still beat Dangerfield. I'm not saying that Timson's going to lose. I'm just saying that it, I can see them running the table it won't after be so Dangerfield. Easy. Yeah, yeah, I want to see. I want to see what they do against Dangerfield. Then and I can here, hop on that train. Here, here's what I think too. Like, do we really know how good Beckville is right now? Because they didn't look very good. I mean, yeah. I, when I when I heard Bussy wasn't playing, it made me rethink my pick. Like, yeah. I didn't want to change it, but I was like, man, now now that's this Again, game. Probably, see, that's what I'm saying. You take that, you take that main guy out, and everybody then, thinks different. But then but that shows I how watch, good they are. But I watched yeah. the game, and I'm like, okay, so they can throw in. A guy like JJ Gardner in there, and they didn't miss, they didn't skip a beat at least in this game. Mm-mm. Now against Dang. Dangerfield, that'll be another story. They they're a bigger school. They'll have more players on the sideline. You know that's a definite factor. You have more bodies, especially yeah. with the heat. Uh, you got a lot of guys on Timson are probably playing both ways. Uh, you're missing yeah, one guy. Understand. So you're is missing there any one guy. As to as to why B- Bussy is out, he, he's not injured, is he? It's track season. He had a knee injury. 
So he had a little some kind of sur- I don't okay. think it was serious, but some kind of surgery. And okay. they're going to hold him out till district. It, it's more precaution. It's yeah. he, I think he could yes. play right now. It's just more precaution. But, but it just shows who said it. they oh. didn't need him. I don't know who, <laughs> they didn't need. Well, him. I don't know who said it, but surgery is any surgery is serious. Well, that's that. That's a, that was on, but it, yeah, I know what you're saying. But it was like, like, uh, you, they, they, you don't. You don't. Like, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's, like that. It's not a major. It's not a major. Right. You know, it's not like crazy though. I mean, he's young, so he he. You know, when you're young, you like a rubber band. You you tend to bounce back a little bit. You know, you you just kind of. Yeah. You get, may have Adrian Peterson cartilage or, or ligaments. Yeah, <laughs> and I've Bro. never seen anybody. Hey, I nine listen. Months after a torn Adrian ACL Peterson and is the only the one next year. with that. That is with crazy. That kind of DNA. Hmm. Nobody comes back kind of nine DNA. months after the ACL tear. Nobody. Right. Adrian listen, Peterson. Did. Adrian Peterson is God's <laughs> created player. And he, he just wanted to show y'all that he watching. Hey, you know what's bad? This he's generation play doesn't too. like this generation doesn't. They don't even know like that Adrian Peterson. Like that is that's a shame. That. Like that is bad. Well, like, that man, yeah. did, like that dude was different. I I know but, somebody that there's a couple of guys that I want to talk about in this next matchup that are different. Um, as we the game that that I was at, Kyle was down the field. Uh, you guys were watching the Gilmer Chapel Hill game, another track meet. Um, we had on NetSN, and man, was there a lot of points scored in this game? Um, Kyle, uh, give us some insight what you thought I mean, before the homers start talking, you know, <laughs> about the yeah. game. And, and everything I'm about to say is coming from a Lindellian, so I just want you to understand where this yeah. is coming from, how impressed I am by both these schools. The <laughs> The amount of athletes that were on that field Friday night was tremendous. I mean, it was a a great opening night football game. It was hot, hot, hot out on that field. But and so was the action, though. But Coach Reardon, um, after the game, uh, Vince, you were talking about Adrian Peterson. Coach Reardon called. I, I don't know. I think he would. I think he was talking to Rick about Ricky Stewart. Called him Adrian Peterson in in the backfield. So um, mm. yeah, co- coach coach realizes that too. But Chapel Hill, man, they. I didn't expect them. I, I picked Chapel Hill to win. I thought Chapel Hill would beat Gilmer. Not like that, though. I didn't think Chapel Hill would put 71 up on, on Gilmer's uh, defense. And I, the, my only concern with Chapel Hill is the same concern I have with center. You could put up all these points. you got to find a way to stop somebody. And now, granted, Gilmer's a great offense. I get it. I understand that. So is center's offense. But Tatum still, or so is Tatum's offense, but center still needed to stop somebody. Um, that's my only concern with Chapel Hill right now, and I know it's early. Run game is phenomenal. If somebody does is able to shut down that run game, can they pass the ball, though, to win games would be my other question. Um, but, I mean, it wasn't broke on Friday night, so don't fix it. That they, Brisbane and Stewart combined over 500 yards right. rushing. Can You're I, doing fine. Can I talk to you, Kyle? <laughs> yeah. So, Brisbane, 15 carries, <laughs> 331 yards, four touchdowns. Okay. Ridiculous. Ricky Stewart, 20 carries, 298 yards, and one touchdown in three quarters because he was cramping in the third quarter and did not did not play. Nearly so, 600 yards rushing between two guys, or over yeah. 600 yards. And and J. Bo Cook had a touchdown run. He probably had close to 100 yards yeah. um, as the third string tailback as you know Greenlee was ejected from the game early, the backup. So, mm-hmm. man. Uh, oh, oh, here's another Lindell guy, Kyle. Here's your boy, Jake. Uh, that game reminded me of the Lindell CH game last year. Uh, he he says he thinks CH can take it. That's two Lindell guys. Well, that's I know it's just one game, but after the season that Chapel Hill had last year, knowing everybody they had coming back, it kind of it almost feels like it's their year. Like it's the year that Chapel Hill makes that run, and it that got off to a heck of a start. Now they got another tough one coming up this week with Van. I don't think that's going to be an easy out. I don't think Chapel Hill needs yeah. to overlook Van, and I don't think they are yeah. overlooking Van. But um, it's going to be a tough one again this week. But yeah, Chapel Hill has the pieces to make a deep run for sure. Like I said, defense needs to get shored up. And my only other concern, we saw it last year. Brisbane can throw the ball. We know he can throw it, but if they stop that run, can you adjust on the fly and be able to complete some passes to, to keep the chains moving? True. Um, I, my, my biggest thing is, well, first of all, um, they alluded to his first time chapel was beat Gilmer ever. You know, they played nine times. They haven't beaten them. And that was my biggest takeaway was, 
you know, getting over that hump. You know, it was a program. It was a program defining game for those for those guys. And, you know, this wasn't a – you don't just go to Gilmer and win. And you, know, you definitely don't go to Gilmer and put up 71 points. So that's 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 unheard of too, um, as you know the game is aggressive. And I, second, I second line most, play, man. Hey Corey, just a fat fun fact for you there: the second most points yeah, Gilmer's yeah. ever allowed, seventy-two. I think they yeah. allowed that back in like the fifties or sixties. I heard the guy in the press box say, "So second most points I think ever." Ken, Ken put up Ken put up some points on all close to seventy years years ago, um, but you know, like it was alluding to. Good offensive line play. Gilman's got Gilman's fast. I got, you know, I just I just felt like in my gut that it was going to be a Chapel Hill game, you know. But um, it, I know everybody saying oh, it's their year. They've they've to me, and I'm with Kyle on this. I don't care about the offense, about the defense. You know, if you you got, I'm looking for some shutouts. I'm looking for some zero games. Like you go to like you play Van, you blank Van, fifty nothing, blank them. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to be they're not going to be as athletic as, as as Gilmer is. You know they're going to compete. They're going to play hard. That's a perfect game for them to assert dominance and just say, "No, nah, we're not letting you close. You know, we're not even let you have half the field." You know what I'm saying? Just blank them. But they need games like that. The defense has got to play. Um, but, but we'll see. I mean, they they're they look they look ready, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. And not to forget about uh, Gilmer's numbers. Um, the tailback for Gilmer Henderson had 27 carries, 214 yards, and four touchdowns. He had an outstanding. He, he was fast. He he was quick too. Once he, he once part, he hit he the outside, quick. that was that, he was part of the uh, state four by one state, okay. state relay team. Um, okay, so Makes yeah, sense. He fast. Um, the other tailback they had was I think it was uh, Sims. He had a pretty decent night, but it was Henderson yeah. mostly was was doing the majority of the work there. Uh, if I Gilmer believe Chapel Hill played the pass, I think Chapel Hill played the pass a lot more than they did the run, and that's probably what took them because they they weren't. I think the game plan was we're not getting beat over the top, like you're not passing the ball. Hmm. I think that was part of the game plan. They just gave you know, I guess it's like we can give, we'll give up the run. I don't say you give up the run, but mm-hmm. the run wasn't part of, you know that package. But they just like I'm, we're not giving up anything. Over the yeah. Top. Tennyson and they play Tennyson for Gilmer is going to have to improve the uh, the passing game for Gilmer because uh, that was what hurt them. They couldn't get when they got behind. They they didn't have anything in the passing attack, and I don't know if it was a com- it could have been a combination of just Chapel Hill's defense and just Gilmer's you know lack of maybe a passing attack. They had Tate outside, but they didn't. They had trouble getting him the ball. He got it a few times, and I think the very first play of the game, the little screen pass. Um, he caught and ran all the way down for a touchdown. But besides that, um, they kind of held Tate in check. And I think he was another member of that state uh, relay team, uh, number three on the outside. So um, and that was impressing me. And, I, and I'm and i with you guys on the defense, but I'm going to throw this one out. Like, I'm not going to – it's going to count towards the, the points per game and all that. But I think Gilmer's offense is just that good. So this is one of those games that we can throw this stats out now. They give up forty points to Van next week. Then when we got, I feel like maybe there's a little more issue with Chapel Hill. But yeah, so I'm gonna say this is a forgivable game as far as that goes. When you play somebody, just like Corey said, they need to make a statement and blank them, um, and and move on. I think Carthage is probably feeling the same way. They played a tough opponent. We'll talk about that game in a minute. But I don't. I wouldn't even say their defense was bad. I mean, when you play a good team. They're going to score points. That's just kind of the way it is. Unless mm-hmm. you're Pleasant Grove. It's hard to hold a good team right. down. I mean, those two games, those two defenses. If you blank a good team, they're not good. That's, that's just be, Let's be honest. If you blank a good team, they're not good. And I don't know who told you that. They're not good. Uh, Carthage. I'm sorry, not Carthage. <laughs> Gilmer. Gilmer is a good team. They was going to get what they could. They just can't keep up. What Chapel Hill has is an abundance of athletes, both sides of the ball. And you you just, you know, in those those moments in the game where you start to get tired and they may be be looking, they may be looking to switch you out with another guy. The thing is, like, 
that other guy may not be that he may not he be he may be okay, but like with Chapel Hill, that next guy that comes in should probably be a starter somewhere else. <laughs> like we got that we got that much talent, right? So like it, it's just it's hard to beat a team like that, you know. They almost have to beat themselves, you know. Um they they're they're going to win they I feel like they're going to win out the the rest of this. I don't I don't even like to say that. You know, I just don't I don't like to say that, but it's it it I mean the way they play there's no reason why they can't win out the rest of the season. You better watch out, you know, Vince. Again, they got Pleasant Grove. You better watch out. Well, I mean, they got Pleasant about, Grove on on the schedule. You talking, talking about Gilmer or Chapel? Gilmer? No, I'm talk I'm sorry. I'm talking about Chapel Hill. Oh, I'm my sorry. bad. Okay. I, I, I apologize. I'm, I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. I should I I should have clarified. Yeah. I I mean Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill um they just they're going to they're probably going to win out and they're going to take they're going to run make a deep run. Now, again, teams like this, you know, you got to be sure not to beat yourself, you know. Uh you got to play your game, you know. Um so uh Gilmer, as far as Gilmer goes, Gilmer is still a great team, guys. Yeah. And uh, I swear he's like spill chick. He likes spill chick. <laughs> as far as them playing PG, I ain't gonna get into that till that that come up. So Yeah, we'll uh, talk. I'm sure that will be a pick'em game. We'll we'll definitely talk about that one. Oh yeah. I, I'll have be, something ready for Eddie that day. <laughs> all, all right. All, right now it looks like you know it's gonna be um Kilgore, or I'm sorry, Pleasant Grove's offense versus Gilmer's defense. Which one can can win out? Because we know Gilmer can score. Looks like we know Pleasant Grove mm-hmm. can play defense. So that'll be an interesting matchup when we get there. But we've got a, a, a great game 10 to talk about. Probably, I mean, there was a lot of good games. But, man, this game was a lot closer than we thought as Carthage held off Kilgore uh, to win, guys. And, and, of course, we don't want to talk too much about giving a team credit for losing because we'll, we'll, we'll irritate Mr. Red Zone up there. But uh, mm-hmm. but talk about – I was just impressed with with Kilgore. Like, and, and you know, if you would go to the other show, Vince actually gave me credit for saying Carthage might be gettable this year. Mm-hmm. He may not – he may not admit it now, but he, he did – he did. He <laughs> from each show. You see, I didn't say nothing. I was like, right, yeah, I, but, I said those words. I so said something get- like that and put it in the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so what you guys think of from? I, look, I thought it was – what's funny is when I got – when I went up to KLTV before heading out to my game, there was one of the reporters there graduated from Kilgore, and she was like uh, – they called me over there, and they're like – they said, tell them what you just said. And she was like, yeah, Kilgore's going to beat Carthage. I said, no chance. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> like, that ain't going to happen. And then I'm looking at the score throughout the night. I said, you have got to be kidding me. Um, it was impressive. It was very impressive. Um, Kilgore, and and I think the impressive part is that because you may be right, Brett. I, Carthage may be down a little bit this year, uh, and if if this is gonna if there's a year to get Carthage, this this might be the year. I'm not fully Hold there on, with wait, you yet. Wait, wait. I, I'm not fully there Kyle with you. Kind no. of agreeing with me. Uh, <laughs> makes me, I'm makes not, my heart feel good that y'all are actually you know. Give me some I'm water. not completely there with you yet, but um. It, it's still impressive by Kilgore to to play Carthage that close and to to really nearly knock off the champion, the defending champion. So uh, impressive, impressive game for for Kilgore. I just don't think you can crown Kilgore for keeping it close with Carthage. That's all I was saying. Oh, we're not crowning them because there's another team on Kilgore's schedule that's going to be equally or better than <laughs> Carthage that we we think so. Can I can I say Go something? For it. I just, for it. I just want to. I just want. I just want to say everybody was laughing at me on the beastly, beastly report or whatever about. I said Kilgore. You know, I'm, I'm not saying Kilgore is not going to do it, but I'm just saying there is a chance for Kilgore to come out and get a win. There's no chance. No, no, no. All right, I'm just, Corey. Just Corey. Y'all was sweating Corey. bullets Friday. Y'all was sweating bullets did Friday. You, I don't want to hear nothing about the pickles. I don't want to hear nothing about the did pickles. You pick I told y'all. I told y'all what was going to happen. I told y'all what was going to happen. So you didn't pick Kilgore is what I'm hearing. 
It doesn't matter what I didn't pick. I told y'all what was going to happen. No, no. I was like, hey, what was going to happen? Go. I said, oh, Kilgore. I said, yo, watch out for Kilgore. I said, I know. I said, I know. I said, I know. No, if you really thought like, they were going to win. I think this is going to be a complete blow. If you really thought they were going to win. Everybody, I, didn't, and everybody, I didn't say they were going to win. I didn't say they were going to win. I said Kilgore was going to compete. It's not going to be a complete uh, stomp or a blowout. But it's gonna be a lot closer than uh, what y'all think. Give him his credit. Give him his credit so we can move on. Give him his credit. You can go back and watch the tape. I'm don't just saying. Sleepy. Just like don't Jacksonville. Oh, oh, Jacksonville's getting ran over. Jacksonville played a lot better. You, you don't. You know I will say this. I really great. want. I I hate this. I hate. I hate this for Gilmer, but I really want Kilgore to be Gilmer. I want them to be Gil. I want them to. Here's what I want. I want Chapel Hill to win out. I want Gilmer to. I mean, I want Kilgore to win too, and they get to the end and play each other. That would be amazing. That would be great. Want to do it again? Huh? Well, yeah. That's hard to beat teams three times well, in a row. Let's let's move on and let's move impossible. on and talk about our polls so that Eddie can uh, di- dissect them real quick. Um, we doing that? We got six A, five A uh, polls this week for our from the NetSN poll um, at five this week. Uh, dropping one spot after a loss to Tyler High is Marshall. Um, moving up one spot uh, to four is Texas High. Um, entering the polls this week, uh, last week they were unranked, is Tyler High at three. Um, Lufkin moves up one spot to two. And Longview, even though they lost, they stay at the one spot in the polls. Uh, guys, what do you think about that? How, how does that poll look to you guys? Um, I, I like it. I don't think you can um, knock Longview off the pedestal for losing by two to another good football team, yeah. um, especially when there wasn't anybody else that really yeah. Yeah. dominated to, if to go up. If there was somebody else, then maybe, but there just wasn't yeah. really anybody else to move up. So I, I'm good with it. I mean, I was impressed with the Texas high win. Um, they beat a team they were favored to, to lose to, so I was impressed with that. Um, also, of course, Tyler High getting off to a good start. That's always a good thing for this area. So uh, we'll see how they do against their rival this week, um, but I I, I, I kind of like where it's sitting between between all our our uh, poll picks there, guys. Corey, Vince, y'all got anything mm-hmm. any, anything y'all want to throw in there about this poll? Longview still number one, even though they went zero and one. <laughs> so here's Eddie's uh, opinion here. Eddie says Texas High beat seventh ranked five AD one team last week, and they're. Texas High is ranked eight. Texas High should be two, according to Eddie. So, according to Eddie, he sh- they yeah, should jump everybody. <laughs> All you right, gotta climb the ladder, Eddie. You gotta climb that ladder, man. It, 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 we, gotta we start make that start somewhere. They keep winning, yeah. they'll move up. That's how it is, right? Yeah, you they'll mean? move up. All right, so we got four A poll. Okay, here's how they came out. Uh, Jasper stays at number ten. Um, Sulphur Springs uh, drops a spot from eight down to nine. Uh, Van gains a spot and moves up to number eight. Uh, Lindell stays at seven. Uh, Center also, they stay at six. Uh, Kilgore stays at five. Gilmer drops one spot to four. Pleasant Grove jumps up to three. Uh, We had Carthage at two and Chapel Hill at one. So I think it was based on Chapel Hill's impressive win, a little more dominant than Carthage's. I mean, I, I'm assuming that's 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 where I win. I mean, I I, I saw what I saw at a week one from Chapel Hill. I saw more than Carthage. Now it could flip flop if they play close to Van and Carthage blows out their next opponent for me. But I, I'm I can't be mad about that. The top three to me are kind of separated to me uh, in, mm-hmm. in my poll: Chapel Hill, Carthage, and Pleasant Grove. I think, and then. Of course, the Gilmer loss kind of drops them to that next tier with Kilgore. Of course, Kilgore and Gilmer are going to fight that out this week, so we'll kind of know where they stand. Um, let's see. This is a homer pick if I ever was one. What? What? The, I mean, you are a homer. homer if it was your poll, it doesn't grow be no more. Let's see. I have no. Oh, I have no problem with this one. I'm not sure which one he's talking about. Um, I don't know. Jasper okay. should be number five. Oh, is his only difference? Okay, so maybe he's oh Eddie's okay. If man, we got Eddie a, approval on this poll. Let's let's write this down. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, August thirtieth. It's nine thirty-seven p.m. And Eddie almost approved our whole poll. Wow. Oh, he didn't like the five A one. 
Oh, because we had okay. Longview number one. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. I see. I see. All right. Well, they, Texarkana, uh, Texas, Texas, they, they keep winning. They'll move up. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Anything sticks out to y'all on this one? No, I think it's set up good. Oh, I think it's pretty. I think yeah, it's the, set up good. I think the the we'll have some that that kind of figure themselves out. Gilmer Kilgore there at four and five. That'll that'll settle itself this week. Lindell Van play mm-hmm. each other next week. That'll settle itself. I mean, we'll we're kind of going to get a better pitcher farther down the road, but um, I, I like it. I think it's a good poll. Yeah, out of two. Yeah, I think it turned out really well there. The next one's going to be interesting because you got the 3A, 2A taps poll. Um, you know, we got a lot of teams in there. Um, we'll see how this one shook out. So we've got at number 10 coming into the poll uh, unranked last week is Hooks. Uh, Beckville at nine. They drop all the way down from three. Uh, Troop enters the poll at number eight. Uh, Mount Vernon enters the poll at seven. Harmony drops two spots to six. Carlisle stays at five. Winsboro climbs up three spots from seven to four. Uh, Dangerfield climbs three spots from six to three. Malakoff stays at two, and Timpson stays at one. All right. What do you guys think on that one? Well, let me explain. Nobody jump at Timpson. Let me explain. my uh, my Because Eddie, Eddie had a problem with me drop in harmony but not putting hooks above harmony so let me explain harmony was my number one so i had harmony at the top of the heap so a loss to hooks who i had unranked but just on the outside looking in but harmony was number one hooks coming into the poll is not going to jump harmony just because they beat them when they weren't ranked the week before i'm just not doing that so i did i don't think i put them 10th i think it was a little higher i don't remember what i voted them but um maybe it was 10th i don't remember but um, <clears throat> I, I, I like I think Timson and Malakoff, I think, kind of separate themselves. We were talking about in the 4A with the top three teams kind of separating themselves. I think Timson and Malakoff kind of separate themselves right here. Um, Dangerfield, going to be a really dangerous team. Winsboro is also another really dangerous team in 3A. Um, I like this. I think this one is the toughest, the toughest poll to do for me because there's so many good teams in that 3A, 2A range. So uh, it's a tough poll mm-hmm. to do, but, I mean, I, I, I can't. So Kyle, I disagree with it. Can I can I tell you what you had hooks at? Sure. Not ranked. I thought I put them in. Oh no, I did that out of spite for Eddie. You're right. <laughs> it was on a different poll that I put them in. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Mm-hmm. So, I guess at this point, that's why they're they're probably. Dead. You are allowed to be spiteful. <laughs> it was because he was so hard on me last week. Spiteful. I made it a point that I wasn't going to put hooks in. I remember saying that. They'll be in there next week, though, Eddie. I'll put them in next week. I'm over the, pet, the pettiness now. Okay, so the poll's not switching, Eddie. It's when people put their votes in, then it, it changes. And we're going to have to make sure that that doesn't come alive before the show because evidently he was able to see it. But, but yeah, so whenever we put our, our votes in, then obviously it's going to recalculate itself. So that's what happened. Someone voted, and it changed. So – um, guys, uh, Corey and Vince, what do you guys think about that poll? I mean, that's the toughest poll to be in. Honestly, I, I'm not going to argue with none of them teams. They, every one of them got an argument for being number in the top three. So, um, yeah, I ain't got Tips nothing. Tips is going to be that. number one. Before. Hooks didn't blow Harmony Tips is going to be yeah. number one, obviously. <laughs> but, I mean, two and three, you can, you can make an argument for the rest of them teams. So, let me give an example to Eddie. So, Say an unranked team like, I don't know, UT San Antonio beats a ranked team in the college poll. Does that mean they're going to jump all the way above them just because they beat them? I got a perfect one for you. Let's say Florida Florida and Utah play next Friday or this Friday. Florida and Utah play. Utah's ranked like 14th. Florida's not ranked. So Florida wins. Florida should jump Utah? No. It that's not going to happen. happen. They weren't, happen. They're not ranked. Yeah. This is not just going to jump into the top five from unranked like this. Yeah. So that means if if uh, UT San Antonio, not according to Andy's computer, hey, UT San Antonio, they play Alabama. They beat Alabama. They're going to be jumped to number one. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Appalachian State beat Michigan. They didn't jump. I mean, that's kind of the way oh, the poll works, I guess. Um, so if you want to hear our picks, this is something different about the show this year on our weekly wrap up. 
If you want to hear our picks for week two, you've got to go over and check out our Beast from the East show. It releases every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. It'll be uh, live on YouTube there. It'll also be on a podcast platform on, on our website um, or our, the app. So everybody make sure if you're not on our app yet, um, make sure you get on there and subscribe. There's lots of cool features. Um, it, it was successful last week. We had um, we have around 400 or so users, and so keep sharing that app out so we can get all our scores updated. It really helps us keep up with all that stuff, and it helps you guys out there. There's an app that's simple, and it's all of these Texas scores um, there. So it's got our polls. It's got the pickums there, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's going to pretty much do it for tonight. Guys, uh, any final thoughts before we wrap up this evening? The rankings um, are just rankings. It's not that serious. There's 50 different polls yeah, that you can look at. <laughs> There's polls, 50 God. different polls that you can look it's at. It's all subjective. It's not so. even that serious. <laughs> the rankings matter. Where I'm going to get a certain rankings matter. You're right. To they who? do. At the end of the year. What what you ranked at the end of the to year who? is what matters. I'm going to to who? <laughs> Oh man! All right, Eddie's always Eddie's it. always entertaining. Um, well, that's gonna do it for our first weekly wrap up show of the season. Um, y'all enjoy the games this weekend. Remember, if you want again, if you want to catch our what we picked on our pickums, go check out the YouTube channel. We've got lots of new shows. If you want to check out what Coach Reardon and Trevor Brooks had to say uh, this week after a big win in Gilmer, um, check out our the old dog show. Uh, Corey did a great job of putting that together. Um, and so, um, we also have a Brook Hill podcast. If you're out there, you're a Brook Hill supporter or you just want to listen. Coach Hubbard does a great job of interviewing the coaches and he's going to get players involved this year. So go check that out. We've got lots of great content on that. Um, but until next week, we'll see you this weekend. Kyle, where will you be this week? I got the Rose City Classic, baby. Tyler High and Tyler Legacy. It doesn't sound right saying that, but you know what I mean. It's the Tyler schools playing each other at Rose Stadium. Looking forward to it. 7.30 Friday night. You can catch all the highlights on the Red Zone. Awesome. All right, Vince, where are you going to be this week? I have the distinct pleasure of being in Brook Hill Ooh. and get to experience that atmosphere. Uh, I was promised some barbecue. So, yeah, I'm going to be okay. early. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have it, a good time. It, it's the Warrior so Bowl. If you, if you want to catch Bowl. that broadcast, listen. It, it, the Warrior Bowl. It's going to be something. I'm going to have some barbecue on my lips, and uh, we're going to be talking <laughs> that thing we do, uh, me and Whitman, or whoever's going to be there. It don't even yeah. matter. It might just be me. I have it's, no idea. Uh, we balling. <laughs> Let's go, Brook Hill. We balling, baby. It's, it's you and Whitman this week. Uh, Corey's going to be at home, man, in the control center, letting us know how everything's going. Uh, and I'll be at home. Maybe on the, maybe in the uh -oh. streets. You never uh -oh. know. Corey might be just, stepping out this uh -oh. weekend. You, you never know. know. I might be bending corners. <laughs> yeah. You never know. I might be out bending yeah. corners. But, you but know. Corey, if you're, out, if you're hey. out in the street, tell them where you can watch uh, those games at. Um, Texan Live. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> NetSN dot live mm. or a nice little mobile app. You know, you can, buy Corey. you can watch the game. Yeah, and so I, what, what and is, while Vince and Keith are out in Brook Hill, I'll be at Chapel Hill. Uh, me and Mike D, Mike, Mike D bringing in his his debut on the microphone, will be joining me as we'll be calling the Chapel Hill Van game. Um, and we'll have that game on Texan Live. It'll be in the app. The the link is in there. And also, we'll have the audio-only version for those that don't want to pay for the subscription. So, lots of great games. Center crew will also be on, on NetSN Live this week. They'll be driving to Spring Hill as Center will take Spring on Spring Hill. So, Man, a lot of games. A drive. Yeah, a lot of games. Oh, a lot of games on. We'll have three different games on this this weekend. So if you are at home, uh, tune into the website or YouTube channel to check all those out. Uh, but hopefully you're going to a game because it's just nothing like going to a high school football game. But if you're unable to go, tune in and ask in. We've always got something oh. for you. Oh, I'll be at a game tomorrow too. Oh, a game tomorrow. How are you going to be tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to be at Hawkins tomorrow when uh, Hawkins plays James Bowie. Get some shooting some highlights for the red zone for that one too. So Hawkins, oh, yeah. James Bowie Hawkins tomorrow. Hawkins Hawks. Yeah. All right. Okay. Awesome. Well, okay. Kyle's going to be All doing right. double duty this weekend. Okay. I'm taking tomorrow off, and then I'm going to enjoy my game Friday night. Um, for Kyle, for Corey, for Vince, we're going to catch you next time. We'll see you next week right here at 8.30 p.m. for the weekly wrap-up show. Good night, everybody. Peace.
Is your demanding work lifestyle in need of fire-resistant clothing that can keep up? Well, L4FR clothing should be your go-to for quality, affordability, safety, and style. L4FR was founded by a third-generation oil field worker who is also a veteran. Thus, this company has a deep appreciation for reliability and longevity, all while we provide first-rate customer service. Our durable apparel will serve you well for many years to come, whether you're working on a pipeline, a lineman climbing utility poles, or in any other environment requiring fire-resistant apparel. L4FR has you covered. Our apparel is tough enough to resist hazardous conditions while still providing high comfort and style. L4FR provides clothing options to ensure your safety and comfort, whether you're on the job or not. To view our complete inventory of flame-resistant garments, please visit our online store at L4FRclothing.com or give us a call at 817-757-4935. Si habla espanol. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority.